Welcome back to Decked Out. On today's episode, we are joined by Airball MTG, the third creator of Decked Out. We are also joined by V, our local L2 judge who likes to keep us honest. And for today's episode, each player brought a deck that either fights for the Mirans or the Phyrexians. And as always, thank you to our sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., EDH Rack, and Dragon Shield, but more on them later in the video. Let's go ahead and meet the players. Hey, my name is V. I'm a level two judge, and today I'm going to be playing Othari, Sun's Glory. The point of the deck is to control the board until I get a good position to play my commander and make a bunch of tokens. I'm looking to get a couple cards during this game. First off, Sunforger, so I can tutor out my toolbox of instants. I'm looking for Ward of Piety and Delaying Shield to redirect and prevent a bunch of the poison that I know is gonna be in this pod. But also, if I do get poisoned, I've got leeches. Hey everyone, I'm Airball. You can usually find me playing Pioneer or Standard over on Twitch and YouTube, but today we're playing Ixel Scion of Atraxa Commander. Game plan simple. We're going to get the first couple toxic attacks in on opponents with small infect creatures, venerated rot priests, and the like. And then we're going to proliferate on them with effects like Norn's Choir Master and Karn's Bastion. It's a control approach, but opponents can't really do much about your aggressive plan. Hello, everybody. I'm MTG Nerd Girl, and today we're playing Naali, Sun's Vanguard. My deck is built to create a ton of little token creatures, pump them up, give them double strike, give them first strike, do all the things, and then take over the board. I'm Veggie Wagon, and today I'm going to be playing Vishgraz the Doom Hive. It's Phyrexian Aggro. I've got a bunch of small creatures that are going to get the poison flowing. And if we don't manage to kill them with the infection, <laughs> we'll just beat them down with a 2121 commander. Before we get into the gameplay, we'd like to take a minute to thank our patrons. Without your support, this content wouldn't be possible. And if you'd like to be a part of the show, head on over to our Patreon where you can get signed tokens from the cast and crew, join us for some spell table games, and even submit deck lists for us to play here on the channel. And of course, you can always support us by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. But I think it's time to head to the game. Welcome to the table. Let's see who goes first. 18. Oh my Nat gosh. 20. Oh. Ooh. I got a one. Oh, oh so you skip <gasps> your first turn. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember reading that. Hmm. Aren't you a judge? Don't you know the rules? Uh, apparently I don't. Welcome to D&D magic. <laughs> <laughs> you trip over a rock and lose your turn. All right. Start draw for turn and I will play a forest and do nothing else. Say go. Oh. Play a uh, Temple of Milady and scry <laughs> one. I'm going to put that on the bottom and pass. Okay. Start with a tapped castle. This allows me to tap four mana, tap it, and I create one one white creature tokens. Pass the turn. Draw. That's certainly a card. Uh, fast land. Go. Draw, we'll play a swamp, and we'll tap two for a scavenging ooze. It's a two, two, and I can pay green to exile a card from a graveyard. If that card is a creature, scavenging ooze gets a plus one, plus one counter, and I gain one life, and that's it for me. Me scoozy, me scoozy. Me scoozy. Me scoozy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you got it. Italian sound off in the comments below. Please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. me scoozy, me scoozy, me scoozy. I'm gonna play Varist. I'm gonna tap two for a Plague Mirror as Infect, and it can tap for mana. Pass. All right. Let's go ahead and just play a Plains and a Fell War Stone. I can tap it to add a mana that my opponent can produce. Look at that. Hey. See, unfair it's basic, advantage. It's an unfair advantage. It's basically Arcane Signet. And then I'll pass the turn. We will do a Command Tower and pass. All right, suspicious lack of doing things over there. Yeah, my aggro deck, not so aggro all of a sudden. All right, so let's just go straight to combat before we do anything else. I want to see what's going on with the red player who's not doing anything. Let's swing for two at V. I have no blocks. I'm going to take two. All right, then post combat, we're going to play a, another swamp and tap two for a pestilent siphoner. It's a 1-1 one, one flying creature with toxic one, and that's it. Yes, yes, we shall we shall put these, these poison counters on them and, and benefit greatly. We are pretty toxic. We are pretty toxic. <laughs> <laughs> I think for now, I'm going to tap two and play a Golgari Signet. Tap one for a Venerated Rot Priest. 
Ooh. Bros? Yeah. Yeah. This is pretty good for one mana. It's a one, two with toxic one. And whenever a creature I control becomes the target of a spell, target opponent gets a poison counter. It's any target. Your target, my target, your target. You get a poison counter. Uh, I'll finish up with a Temple of Plenty and Scry one again. This is what I'm talking about. The early Rot Priest means that the poison is inescapable. I can give these counters to whoever I want, and I don't even have to hit them for it. I will leave this card on top, because it's also very good. Oh, no. Pass the turn. All right. I don't like what's happening. All right, I'm going to opt to not uh, cast my four. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and just cast a Staff of the Storyteller. When it enters the battlefield, I create a 1-1 white spirit creature with flying. And also, whenever a creature token enter the battlefield, I put a story counter on it. I can pay one, tap it to remove a story counter and draw a card. And here's my little spirit. It's floating. And hopefully that will protect me from the little pestilence. And then I will play a Boros Garrison tapped and return my planes to my hand. And then I'm going to pass the turn. All right. Draw play uh, Spire of Industry. <sighs> I think I need to do this now. I'd like to play a Mizium Mortars. Deal four damage to target creature I do not control. I'm going to target Venerated Rot Priest. Take the poison. I will take yes. the poison. Uh, hey. Rot Priest, dead. Hey. <laughs> Bada bing. And pass the turn. At your end step, I will use the Scavenging Use ability to exile that burn spell. Not the Rot Priest? Oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> on your end step, I'll activate the Scavenging Ooze and eat the Rot Priest. It gets a plus one, plus one it counter. It does not. Uh, I'm going to pay two life and cast Noxious Revival. Oh, no! Put the <gasps> Rot Priest back on top of my library. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So if you had just... If I had waited, but there was no reason for me to wait and untap. Right. Yeah, that's There's tough. There's no reason. <sighs> We're supposed to be in this together. This is good for me. Hopefully the Boros can can win the day. Mirans need to stick together yeah. to push uh, the Phyrexians off of Mirrodin. Exiling that burn spell would have been a huge soul read, though. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> 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 All right. Draw for turn. So I think that having been sufficiently humiliated by your Rot Priest play, we're going to go to combat and we're going to swing three at Veggie, one of it Toxic. I was just saving my Rot Priest. Yeah. And... Hopefully it can save you back. <clears throat> I'll take three. Uh, Get infected. It's not how it's supposed to work. I just want everyone to have poison counters because I'm going to play my land for turn, which is Karn's Bastion, which if I tap for four, lets me proliferate. And the more people have poison counters, the more poison gets created by the Karn's Bastion when I tap it. But oh. I don't have enough mana to do that yet, so we'll wait. And instead, we'll just add to the board a little bit. We'll tap two for a Blight Mamba. It's a 1-1 one, one for two. It has Infect, and it also has Regenerate for two mana. Importantly, I do not have the green open to regenerate it right now. And pass the turn. Dissension in the Phyrexian ranks. Who would have guessed? I'll draw While a card. we remain unified. I'm very scared. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to tap one. I'm going to play a Venerated Rot Priest. I will also pay two for a Grateful Apparition. It's a 1-1 one, one flyer, and when it connects, I proliferate. I'm going to play a Shine's Shadow Snarl as my land for turn, and I will not reveal a Plains or a Swamp for it to be untapped, because I don't feel like it. I'll go to combat. I'm going to swing my Plague Mirror at you. Oh, you, you, don't, you don't have to do that. I don't have to do that. I will take it. I have no response. There we go. And pass the turn. End of turn, I'm going to go ahead and pay one white, tap, and remove my story counter to draw a card. All right, I'm confused. I thought I had the aggro deck here. Why is Veggie and Airball going absolutely crazy in this game? And I have no way to stop it. I do not have removal, V. I am very sorry. I will do my best to try to find some, but I currently do not have it. Tap four for an Amiria Angel. It's a 3-3 flyer with landfall. When I have a land enter the battlefield, I can create a 1-1 one, one flying bird token. And then we're going to go ahead and play a Plains for turn, which will trigger the uh, landfall for the angel, making a 1-1 one, one bird, as well as the bird making the storyteller get an additional story counter. Burb. Oh. We got a little birdie bird. I love how cute all of these tokens are. This is wonderful. 
so scared of everybody. You're set. You got you make some blockers. You're not even poisoned yet. I got to help V, though, because if V goes down, I'm going down fast. So I don't know how to do that, but I'm going to come across the table to Veggie. Sure. No blocks. Okay. Normally, my plan is to even the life totals, have a nice fun game. Everybody gets to play. But with two poison players, I feel like the best chance of us not being poisoned out is if we just aggro one person down. That seems fair. And Veggie had the lowest life total, so... Seems like a convenient way to say that you're going to do what you normally do. (laughs) (laughs) I I do not go after you on purpose. You're just always a poison player. Right. (laughs) I will pass the turn. All right. I'm going to play a mountain and... I'm going to pass. <laughs> Have you oh, done well. anything? This g- Oh, yeah, you killed Veggie's raw priest. Okay. I will untap. Do you have another way to get your... Never mind. Yeah, I only have one way to get my never mind. <laughs> <laughs> like the record store, Spotify, iTunes. Yeah, it's yeah. just, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to find a physical copy these days. <laughs> digital. Everything's gone digital. Let's go to combat, and I'm going to swing two things at V. You're going to make me do it. I sure am. What's it? Before damage, I'm going to war leader's helix here. Deal four damage to target creature or player, and I gain four life. Okay. And then I'm going to take one infect. I'm going to try to stop it. I can't. I wish I could help. Post combat, we're going to tap a whopping five mana. For a Moldervine Reclamation. It's an enchantment. Whenever a creature I control dies, I gain a life and draw a card. And that's it. Okay. That's a good card. Yeah. I would like one of those right now. I, I got all the creatures and you got all the removal and it's not helping you. I'll just like take borrow, the yeah. spirit. I will just make you a bird. It'll be fine. <laughs> you can just borrow a bird. <laughs> I will send it to you. Carrier pigeon style. I will immediately put it in the meat grinder. This <laughs> <laughs> went really dark really fast. <laughs> Look! It's got sp- um, like metal bits and it's spiky and it's like gross and oily. That certainly sounds like a meat grinder to me. I can't argue with that. Your logic is impeccable. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, uh, we should move on to this. I'm going to tap one, two, three, four, five, six. For Gliss's Retriever, this is 6-6, six, six, Haste, Toxic 3, can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less, and when it dies, I exile it, and I'll return X cards from my graveyard to my hand where X is the number of opponents who have 3 or more poison counters, which is already 1. I'm going to go to combat. Oh, no. I can't stop it. Oh, so this, with its haste, I'm going to send to you, nerd girl. So it cannot be blocked by creatures with power two or less, and it has toxic three. I figure we might as well also, we'll send the Rot Priest to V, and why not the uh, Grateful Apparition to Airball? That's not very grateful of you. Uh, so it would appear... Ishin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I declare no blocks. Uh, I also have no responses. I mean, I'm almost excited to chump my 3-3 and not take the poison. Okay, I'm going to tap and draw a card and see if that informs my decision at all. Uh, Remove the story counter. It's going to be a short book. Uh, Yeah. It's more like a Hallmark card. (laughs) (laughs) Wish you were here. (laughs) Get well soon. (laughs) Well, you know, if... V's gonna die, I might as well die too. So I will take the six. Uh, and then each of us will get, uh, I'll get two more. You'll get one more. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys are just dripping over there. Yeah, it's yeah. gross. This is almost how the actual Mirans felt in <laughs> New Phyrexians. Yeah, just completely <laughs> overwhelmed. Yeah. And it suddenly out of nowhere, the Phyrexians are everywhere. I will pass my turn. Oh no. Like I just genuinely don't think there's a thing we can do here. Um, Okay, I'm going to go ahead and play a land for turn, which will trigger and give me an additional bird from the landfall, as well as a story counter. Hopefully that is enough for something. I'm going to go ahead and tap 
four, and we are going to cast Kemba's Banner. It's a four Mirrodin card. Comes into play with a two, two rebel. The equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each creature I control. So I'll have a seven, seven at least to block something. And then I will move to combat and I will attempt to attack <clears throat> Veggie for one more. <laughs> I will gladly accept your one as you are accepting of my poison. <laughs> Pass the turn. Veggie and Airball have a lot of creatures, and I'm getting real worried because I've got some spot removal, but I'm going to need something else to get out of this hole. Does it do it? I don't know if that's it or not. Or at least it's a thing. How many cre- how many creatures? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and this one. nine, ten, eleven. How many are there about to be? <laughs> Zero. Uh, I'm going to tap a single red. Shock. <laughs> Blasphemous act. First off, it costs eight and a red, but you'll notice I only paid a red mana. That's because it costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield, and it deals 13 damage to each creature. I see. And it doesn't target. <laughs> That's cute. I, I think priority goes around the table, right? <laughs> Anybody have anything they'd like to do? I'm actually oddly okay with this. I am not okay with this, but I cannot stop it. I am oddly okay with this too, because I'm going to tap two, and I'm going to cast Grand Crescendo for X is zero. Create X one one green and white citizen creature tokens, which will be zero, but also creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Wow. Ooh. Ooh, we getting there. <laughs> wow. That worked out very well. <laughs> All right. So it resolves. The fires cleanse this portion of Mirrodin. <laughs> uh, hey, you get to draw cards and gain life. I sure do. Moldervine Reclamation triggers. I draw two, gain two. That will also trigger Gliss's Retriever. I have two opponents that are corrupted. So I will return two cards from my graveyard to my hand. Venerator brought Priest and Grateful Apparition. I haven't played a land for turn, so I'm going to play an Axe Guard Armory. It enters the battlefield tapped. And then with my three mana that's left, I'm going to make it up to y'all a little bit. And I'm going to cut a deal. Each opponent draws a card. That's going to be all three of you. And then I draw a card for each opponent who's drawn a card this way. It's not a May. So please enjoy your cards. I appreciate it. And I will draw three cards. And with that, which I feel like is a wonderful turn, it's yours. It's not bad. All right. Nerd Girl thinks that she survived that board wipe. Well, that's not a real board wipe. This is. So I'll play my land for turn. I finally found my white canopy vista. Would ETB tapped unless I have two more basics, but I definitely do by now. And we're going to tap four for culling ritual. Destroy each non-land permanent with mana value two or less. Add black or green for each permanent destroyed in this way. I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can't, I can't survive that one. And I have no more mana to draw from my storybook. No, it's all permanents or the creatures. Non-land permanents. Oh man, I needed the cards. Which gives us a grand total of seven. I'm going to add all of it in green. We'll use two of the floating seven mana to play an arcane signet. And then that we'll use the remaining five plus the arcane signet to cast a Phyrexian Swarm Lord. It's a four, four for six with infect. At the beginning of your upkeep, create a one, one green Phyrexian insect creature with token with infect for each poison counter your opponents have. <laughs> Go. If... The Frexians win. I that's me. I'm I'm one of them. So I win if they win, right? Yeah. 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 Draw a card. Play Swamp. Uh tap one for a soul ring. We'll make this interesting. And by interesting I mean I'll make a bad decision. Uh I'll tap one, two, three, four, five for Caress of Phyrexia. Target player draws three cards. Uh did you tap six? Yes. Sure did. I'm going to tap. He's legally one, allowed two. to do that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Z. Don't Z. help them. <laughs> Z. Yeah, that's fair. I'll tap one, two, three, four, five. 
cast Caress of Phyrexia. Target player draws three cards, loses three life, and gets three poison counters. I could make one of you sweat. But you're not gonna. But I'm not gonna because I think otherwise with just these two cards in hand, I'm gonna be out of the game. So I'm gonna draw the three cards. All right. You're giving yourself poison counters? I'm giving myself poison counters. Oh my God. The greed. Oh, The greed is real. That is so greedy. I thought for sure Airball was getting some counters. Ah, yes. The caress of Phyrexia looks a little like this. I will tap one and I will cast Venerated Rod Priest. Third time's the charm. That's Last just turn. that's just rude. <laughs> I, don't, I want my storybook back. All right. Well, we're gonna start with an, a land. You know, that's a, that's a thing. We get a little bird back. We can we can rebuild the bird army. The land that I'm playing is Kirk Heap. It can tap to add a colorless. It can also pay two and tap to create an 01 red kobold creature. So we'll go ahead and tap two, four, and five. And we are going to play a Jor Kadeen. First striking five, four with Metalcraft. Creatures you control get plus three, plus O, as long as you have three or more artifacts, which I no longer do thanks to Airball being a poop. And, uh, you know, Airball, you're mean to me. Yes. And I want to hit you for three in the air and hopefully make you stop being mean. I don't think that will make me stop. I think it will make me meaner. But I will take the three, was it? Yeah. All right, and I will go under starting life total. (laughs) I'm going to (laughs) cry. Go, V, save us. All right. So I do have a mountain... I do have an arcane signet, and I do have a way to deal with that. I would like to attempt to cast a Chandra Torch of Defiance. Okay. I can plus one to exile the top card of my library. I may cast that card. If I don't, Chandra deals two damage to each opponent. I can plus one to add red red to my mana pool. I can minus three to deal four damage to target creature. You might be able to guess what I'm going to be doing. I hope so. And then minus seven is I get an emblem with whenever I cast a spell, this emblem does five damage to target creature or player. I don't think that's going to happen, though, because I am 100% going to minus three targeting the Phyrexian Swarm Lord. That sounds like a reasonable thing to do. It's yeah, uh, you would have gotten 13 poison counter, 14. And, yeah, what, been able to kill everybody pretty uh, much? Like right, right then? <laughs> but with that being said, I have used my mana. So it's your, your go. But before that happens, Moldervine Reclamation will trigger from the Swarm Lord's death. I will draw a card and gain one. Back up to starting life total, and now... Now we untap. The birds are coming for you. See, I got I'm sure they are. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. I can't help. Well, here's the thing. Every resistance needs action and patience. And poison. <laughs> you are not invited to this party, Benji. <laughs> Go home. Yeah, I'm part of the resistance. Go to your room. Right? <laughs> You're grounded. <laughs> you you look a bit spiky. Is that is that metal or is that just hair? I, I, I have a cold. <laughs> All right, we're going to tap one for a soul ring, play a swamp for turn, and we're going to play Icky Rats or Icker Rats. It's a two one with infect, and when it ETBs, every player gets a poison counter. No, oh. all right, I'm including gonna... me, and I'll pass the turn. I'm gonna pay one, two, three, four, five. And cast my commander, Vishgraz, the Doom Hive. It's a 3 3. Menace, toxic 1. When it enters the battlefield, I create 3 mites, and it gets plus 1 plus 1 for each poison counter my opponents have. So, yeah. <laughs> so, it, it gets plus 17 plus 17? 12. Oh, yeah, not mine. Or, oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, 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 okay. Only plus 12. It's only plus 12. Yeah. I, th- I think that's doable. That's fine, right? It doesn't have trample, does it? It does not have trample. It has menace, but it doesn't Ooh. have trample. Toxic one still means it'll only deal one poison, poison damage, counter, right? yes. Okay. Yeah, but at that point, it's just commander damage killing you. Oh, it is his commander. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it only needs to hit you twice. Uh, and I get three mites. Three of these bad boys. I am scared and I want my mommy. I'm going to pay two uh, for Grateful Apparition. I actually think I need 
my opponents to not be dead for me to kill my opponents. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that checks out. Mm-hmm. Go to combat and swing with my venerated rot priest. Not at you. I, I kind of figured that was the case. I was hoping if she would live. I, I certainly was hoping so, too. A card that generates mana and card advantage? Yes. I'll pass turn. Okay. I'm going to find removal. It is going to be my turn to save the day. Yep, that's that's planes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to play it because it's going to give me another bird. I'm going to get two birds. We're going to tap four for my commander, Nayali Sun's Vanguard. Attacking tokens have double strike, and whenever one or more tokens I control attack a player, exile the top card of your library during your turn. You've attacked with a token, you may play those cards. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pay three to equip my Kemba's Banner onto my non-summoning sick bird. And it now becomes a one, two, three, four, five, a six, six, that's going to attack veggie with double strike. And when it does, I can exile this card and I may play it. Uh, we revealed an anthem effect. And it's, I think it just goes under this basically. 12 in the air. Yep. Don't like that. Let's block with the uh, grateful apparition. So I don't take that 12. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. <laughs> one, one less threat off the board. <laughs> I'm going to try. We're doing great. All right. Uh, and then I'm going to pass the turn because that's all I can do. All right. I'm going to play a Reckless Impulse, exile the top two cards of my library until the end of my next turn. I may play those cards. So we've got a Buried Ruin and we've got the Wanderer. Interesting. I'm going to play this land. This Wanderer is just too good for me to pass up. The Wanderer is a legendary planeswalker that has no subtype. Static ability is prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to you and other permanents I control. And then I can minus two, exile target creature with power four or greater. We will see if it survives. Uh, what's not surviving? I, 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 okay, hear me out before I know that I, that's going I, to target this. I don't know what he's going to say, but don't listen. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let him speak. If anything, to let the hot air out. Maybe it exhausts him so that we've got a better <laughs> a better chance. Anything we've learned, it for sure does not exhaust me. <laughs> it's bottomless. If nothing else, it's fun to watch you squirm. We've got the Hindenburg of hot air over here. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I've still been drawing pretty dead here, so I'm just going to have to politic my way around until I can finally hit something that allows me to get back in this game. I, I think I have the best creature on the board right now. Yeah. But I'm also halfway dead to poison. You do have another toxic player here. My intent is for this to deal with that so I don't have to be, so I don't get poisoned out. So at least for a rotation, I plan to send this that way. And we'll promise you that if you let it live. Do you have other good targets though is the thing. That's, it has to have power four or greater. Is that, that right? is the thing. It does have to have power four or greater. I think it's a general rule when you see plus 12 on a magic card, you should probably. Yeah. I can take that off. I mean, like, like I, it's just, <laughs> so it was a valiant effort and I do understand and I wish that I could oblige. And if there were other good targets, then maybe I would have. But I'm going to minus two, the Wanderer targeting Vishgras. Uh, uh, hmm? I. My only, I'm going to actually put this in Veggie's favor. Yeah. Only because of the proliferate land. If this is a promise we think that Veggie will uphold, it will help at least remove some stuff so we can get in to kill Airball before. Because he's. This you, is inevitable. You can proliferate now. So you're, all, we're already going up to six and seven. And then you untap, we go to seven and eight. Checks out. And there's a poison there. So you're going to nine. All right, Veggie. Yes. I'm going to request you to sweeten the deal for me. All right? Go on. I want you to not swing anything at me on your next turn. Or the Wanderer. Fascinating. That deal is acceptable. Okay. So that way you don't die of poison, yeah. Uh, end step. Tap the Bastard, proliferate. Everyone except me, take Boo. another poison. Mm-hmm. We need to kill Airball. And untap. Because Veggie actually does have to help us kill Airball because the proliferate will kill Veggie too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
I have untapped, I have drawn, and I am going to go to combat, if that is acceptable to everyone here. It's not, but go for it. (laughs) This is you accepting it? Okay. Uh, Let's send my rats at V. I have no responses. Okay, you take two infect. Oh gosh. So you're dead. Dead on board. Oh no. But not yet. Oh no, so that means Wandering Emperor is not going to get to kill that and I'm going to have to deal with it. Oh no, I, think, I made a boo-boo. Think of it as an insurance policy. <laughs> I made a boo-boo. Well, the, yeah, there's. we'll see if it happens. We're going to tap four for a further insurance policy. We're going to cast Windborn Muse. It's a 2-3 flyer. Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature they control. That's attacking you. And I'll pass. Now, don't think I don't see what you're going to do here because... I do see it. <laughs> so right now this is plus 14. But if somebody suddenly gets to 10 poison counters, it's not going to go up one. We'll go down nine. I'm going to play a Tainted Field for my land for turn. One, two, three, four, five. To cast Norn's Choir Master. It's a five, four, flying first strike. And when a commander I control enters the battlefield or attacks, I proliferate. Oh. You're dead on board in many different ways. Oh, that's a sneaky way of getting around that. Ah! I feel like you should have had, you should have attacked before casting it. Hey, proliferate. I choose which. That's true. That's true. I'm going to go to combat. Hold. I'm going Hold. to attack with Vishgraz. That air ball, I will pay two mana for Windborn Muse on attack that will trigger Norn's Choir Master. I will most certainly proliferate your poison. <laughs> I've got earplugs. I can't hear any of the choir. <laughs> Is there a fat lady in Elish Norn's Choir? <laughs> <laughs> not, not in hers. Oh, but. it's against his best interest to kill me, especially on attacks. Uh huh. I'm a pawn. You are I a get super. to live. I'm a pawn. And, it, and it's the same thing here because I think Airball needs you to kill the uh, thing. Yeah, it's, it's it's. I'm so useful alive. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the only other proliferate will be Nurgle, Not me. your poison as well. No, thank you. No, no, thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Would you like to proliferate the Wanderer? Oh, <laughs> you know what? Go for it. Hey! <laughs> Does it hurt to ask? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is 17 normal damage, commander damage, and one of it is toxic. Uh, now it is 19 because this is up to plus 16. You just gained a poison counter and so did Nerd Girl. Sure. Take it. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that damage. Okay. So 19 commander damage from Vishgras. And you get another poison? I will pass my turn. I think we can kill Nerd Girl here with Veggie's help if I target his Rot Priest with Beast Within, but that leaves me pretty naked and I don't want to lose my only removal spell. Oh! <laughs> oh! Aren't you supposed to be like good at poker or something? <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> so. So. So I have a bunch of cool cards that make tokens in my hand, but they're double red. So I was like, I need a red source. That'd be cool. But this thing won't be active because I don't have three artifacts. So I'd also like an artifact, but I can't do that and get a red source. So then I, this guy's not that good. So it was like, not that good. But then we got a talisman that can also produce red. It's an artifact. Yes. <laughs> that is not the card I thought yeah, you had no. that reaction to. <laughs> Yes, a mana rock. <laughs> Listen, when you're on the back foot in a resistance, you have to take joy right. in the little, little things. Victories. Yeah, but it activates the Jorkadine. It gives me a second red source, and I get to do so much cool stuff now. Don't forget to use code Top Deck at checkout for five percent off your order. So we'll go ahead and ping myself for one here. No problem, happy to pay that. And we are gonna pre-combat cast Hordling Outburst, and I'm gonna make three one-one goblin creature tokens. Three little gobbos, woo! And this gives me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight creatures. So this is a nine-nine 
Oh, no, I'm sorry. 12-12 double striker in the air. Wow. So we will indeed pay the two so I can attack air ball. And I'm going to come across to veggie as well with my other bird, which is just a 4-1 double striker. And whenever something attacks, I can flip a card, put it under, and and play that this turn. Well, that's spicy. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, well, uh, what, first I have to deal with a 4-1 a double striker. Mm -hmm. I feel like my life total is pretty healthy right now. Don't love taking eight, but I will. Great. And the Muse is going to take it for the team. Yeah. The Muse is going to die, and Reclamation will trigger. I gain a life and draw a card. I'm not going to lie. I forgot Airball had a flying blocker. <laughs> I did what I could. Yeah. We'll see if I get a turn. I will play a land, which will trigger landfall, and I'll get a secondary bird. It is going to enter tapped. Do I blow up non-token creatures? I'm essentially at nine poison. That plus oh, the untap, right? Yeah. Like I'm before my turn, I'm at nine. And then Veggie could target his own thing and kill me. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of gross, but I think I have to do it. So we're going to go three, four, five, six, and we'll tap one goblin. Uh, and we will go ahead and cast Hour of Reckoning for the Convoke cost, and we'll destroy all non-token creatures. So, unfortunately, right when I got my cool my cool team out, but that's totally, I think, okay. Okay. Icar Rats will die, Reclamation will trigger, gain one, draw one. I'm gonna lose everything but my mites. Dishgras commands it. Uh, that will be the end of my turn. You no longer have a Raw Priest? I no longer have a Raw Priest. Interesting. Okay. Then you're no good to me. Go ahead. <laughs> you're no good to me. <laughs> oh, because he wanted to target your rot priest. Yes. Untap. Probably to set up lethal on both. Draw. Of them. Split second, 23 damage. Aster, bearer of blades. It's a 4 4. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top seven cards of my library. I may reveal an equipment or vehicle card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom in a random order. Equipment I control have equip one, and vehicles I control have crew one. I'm looking at you for permission for everything, like you're an like overprotective <laughs> dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm going to choose hex gold halberd. An equipment. Uh, it has four Mirrodin, so it makes a two-two. But uh, as long as it's my turn, equipped creature has first strike and trample. These get put onto the bottom in a random order. Put that into my hand. I'm going to activate Axe Guard Armory. So one red, red, white. I need to lose a life for this. Sacrifice it. I search my library for an aura card and or an equipment card. Reveal them. Put them into my hand. Then shuffle my library. All right. I'm going to choose Sunforger and Ward of Piety. Sunforger, we all know and love. I can pay a red and a white and unattach Sunforger from whatever creature it's on. And then I can search my library for a red or white instant card with CMC4 or less and cast it without paying its mana cost. And Ward of Piety is an aura that says one and a white. The next one damage that would be dealt to enchanted creature this turn is dealt to target creature or player instead. You'll note That's that poison. the source stays the same. Oh, no. Yeah. You can poison someone else. I can. That's cool. Yeah. That's combat damage or any damage? Uh, any damage. I'm going to pass the turn. On your end step, we're going to proliferate. You can still not choose to do you if, I, if, I if you suit. If, I if can. You suit. I can. And I'm going to untap again next turn anyway, so the Sword of Damocles still hangs, looms large over <laughs> V's head. But... That Ward of Piety is interesting to me. If you cast it and equip it and I get to decide where the damage goes, I won't kill you this turn. <laughs> I'll take that. Uh, I do want to let you know, technically it does uh, cost mana per, uh, per damage, mm -hmm. but uh, it is per damage and I am more than happy to make that deal. Okay. Uh, then we're going to just proliferate onto Veggie and Nurkrum. You know how they say never negotiate with terrorists? Well, <laughs> sometimes you gotta. 
I don't know if you want to use <laughs> that bit, but that's the episode title. That's Sometimes it. you got to negotiate with terrorists. In a hundred percent, terrorists I'll not so bad. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, I almost spit my drink on the table. <laughs> we know what the YouTube algorithm thinks of those right. videos, right? So. <laughs> Play a command tower for turn, and I think. It is of vital importance that I keep the Bastion up for the rest of the game. <laughs> nah, you can tap it down. Are you fine. sure? Are you sure you'll let me do that? <laughs> I think instead we're going to tap and my commander will make its first appearance. We're going to cast Ixel, Scion of Atraxa. It's a 2-5 flyer, Vigilance, Toxic 2, and it has Corrupted. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent who has three or more poison counters, which is all of them. Each of them exiles the top card of their library face down. I can look at it and play it for as long as they remain exiled, and I can spend mana as the mana of any color to cast those spells. We'll go to end step. Trigger. And let's see all of your guys' top cards. Airball needs to die. Yeah. And the only way I can do it is if you remove the blocker. I'll play Swamp for turn. I will tap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Recast my commander, Vishgraz. I will pay two for Iker Claw Mirror, which is a 1 1 infect that gets plus two plus two when it becomes blocked. And I also get three more mites. I will go to combat and I'll swing three mites at airball. They're 1 1s? They're 1 1s. Okay, I'll block one. Take two toxic. Yep, one dies. And two damage, because it might be relevant for yes. you. Yes. And two damage. I will pass my turn. If Airball doesn't have to block with that thing, then you, we all just die because right. one here, one here, untap, attacks you yes. and does it again. Yes. So we all have to kill it this turn. So I need something epic off the top. Wait a minute. If I attack each of you. Yes, then you get three cards. And maybe I can top deck something that removes that at instant speed. That like, would be... Like a path or something. And that would kill... Oh, but then your stupid mites will just kill me. Hey, if you can... If you top deck instant <laughs> speed removal for this, I will give you... I will give you a turn. <laughs> um, so I should not tap my mana to play more creatures. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is an eight... Eight double striker that's not even lethal is the problem they all have double strike though right so it's yeah. still you still should be able to deal lethal and have an attacker for each of us oh yeah okay and you're not going to attack me for a turn i will not i will make sure that i i do not kill you for a turn if you can hit that off the top okay so this is uh the ability of the commander that's yes. giving double strike and letting you draw yes, yes. Uh -oh. whenever i attack a creature before attacks We'll tap three and cast Beast within targeting your commander. But that means no proliferate this turn, right? Yeah. Yes. That, so... that gives me a turn. Ooh. Airball is tapped out. Well, he doesn't have enough mana to activate Karn's Bastion. I have a chance. This is my hope. I can't just squander this. I need to do something good with it. Okay. Am I going to cast anything, though? Well, I, you, I think you've got to put the pressure on the three of us, the resistance, uh, <laughs> need to <laughs> take out the Rexian menace here. Excuse me? Huh? We're going to go to attacks with my 8-8 eight, eight, to airball. 8-8, eight, eight, uh, just vanilla? Flying. I'll take 8. I will, I will take a point of damage and I will make a 0-1 guy in response to no blocks. Nice, and it is literally an 0-1, so I'll make the 0-1 in response to no blocks, and you'll take one more point of damage. Sure. That will be my turn. Okay, V, all eyes on you. Mm-hmm. So I think I might actually have it, but I need you two to make the correct choices. All right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to cast Seize the Spotlight. Each opponent will choose Fame or Fortune. For each player who chose Fame, gain control of a creature that player controls until end of turn. Untap those creatures and they gain haste until end of turn. For each player who chooses Fortune, I draw a card 
and create a treasure token. I need both of you to make you famous. To make me famous. So you can have creatures? I need, because I get to choose. That will mean that there are not enough blockers. Airball, would you like to choose fame or fortune? I will choose the one that keeps my creature. Great. I will get a treasure token and draw a card. I will choose fame. I will also choose fame. I am going to grab this grass. Please. I'm going to grab this bird. Wow, these two is enough if they, if, if. Yeah, uh, I'm going to crack the treasure and the arcane signet and attempt to cast a Sunforger. The equipped creature gets plus four plus O, which is normally not relevant, but it certainly is now. And white and a red unattached Sunforger. Search my library for a red or white instant card with converted mana cost four or less and cast that card without paying its mana cost. Hold on to your butts. I would like to move to combat. Okay. All at airball. Uh, okay, we will block here. Go to damage. Damage. I'll die. Woof! Let's go! Uh, now that I don't have to worry about the laser beam, I am going to attach Sunforger and conspicuously leave two mana up. Move to end step. These will go back. Oh this my is gosh. significantly lower. There's only plus 17. Just a baby now. Just a baby now. Okay, uh, I will untap. <laughs> oh my gosh. We are at eight and nine boys encounters. Yeah, but there's a there there's a An whole online sunforged sun world that could happen. There are so many possibilities. Would you like to find out any of them? I recommend not. Yeah, so you should just make them have it. Attack them with one might and make them have it. Right? Nine poison. We're supposed to be friends here. But you guys are saying that this is so scary, like. He is legally allowed to do that. Then I die. Not to me. I got babies. And if Sunforger is as scary as you think, probably the whole world will get blown up at instant speed anyway. I don't think the whole world will get blown up. I think I will get blown up. Then I, th I think you do that. Okay, combat. <laughs> I am going to unattach Sunforger. And... We are going to get a pretty spicy thing. I would like to cast Intimidation Bolts. It deals three damage to target creature, and then other creatures cannot attack this turn. I am going to target Nerd Girl's Beast. Uh, does it fizzle if there's no target? Correct. Great. <laughs> Let's convoke two things, and we're going to make my beast phase out for the turn ah! by casting Clever Concealment. Any number of target non-land permanents I control phase out. <laughs> <laughs> what is this game? No! <laughs> what is even happening? <laughs> Initially, I was just trying to bait Veggie into attacking V, so that way V would have to board wipe, I could use the trick, and then untap kill V. But I feel like this spot was just too good. Top 10 anime betrayals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let, me, let me help you with this. <laughs> hey, well, you know what? In that case, all I gotta do is swing with one might. I see no uh, untapped mana, I see no blockers that are up. I will attack you with a single might and I die by the last <laughs> bite to my ankle. I've been betrayed, backstabbed by my comrade, my friend. And now a tiny little insect is going to take me out. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly was rooting for you, but that was too perfect of a spot for that card. Uh, I don't think I'm in a great position here, but also has this ever happened? What? Where we've been the last ones. This is what happens when Veggie makes less bad decisions. <laughs> I feel like you made plenty of bad decisions. I will pass the turn. All right, let's draw and see if we can get something sweet. Every time I say that, I draw planes. <laughs> yeah, so this is the general's normal tax. We've got two, two more for the regular tax, and I can make a creature with my lands. That might be enough creatures if Veggie doesn't have removal. So we'll go ahead and cast uh, my commander for eight, 
which is a lot. No reason to cast a, a smaller creature. I'll also just main phase the Audric Master Tactician. First strike doesn't do anything because he's not attacking yet. Um, and I will just go to combat. Does Veggie have anything that blocks flying? I don't. Yeah, but a removal spell. So I was debating whether oh. I attack with these two, but I don't think it, it kills Veggie. So I'm just going to be safe and just attack for the 11-11 double strike in the air. Okay. Hands. Wow. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> we won. The resistance won. <laughs> <laughs> this was an entirely wild game that kept on going every which way but loose. And I, despite being taken out, sometimes resistances need to make sacrifices. And all in all, the Mirans won. From start to finish, that game was an absolute roller coaster. I never knew who was ahead, and I certainly didn't think I was going to win. But win or lose, those are the best kinds of games. So close, but once it got down to two players, I was out of resources and had a dead hand. But, I mean, the Mirans won all three of us in the resistance. That's a victory. Veggie, you're not cool enough to be on Team Mirans. I thought for sure one of the Poison players was going to win the game. But Nerd Girl found a way to swing it out of nowhere. Just as well. I'm roping my arena opponent. I'll see you later. Thank you guys so much for watching. As a special treat, we have an exclusive look of our next episode, all based around cosplay. But before we get there, we'd like to take a minute to tell you about our sponsors. Cool Stuff Inc. is the best place to pick up anything from sealed product to singles. And don't forget to use our code TOPDECK at checkout for 5% off your order. And if you need a little deck building inspiration, head to edhrec.com where they've got all the synergies to match your budget and style. And now that you've got your deck list, you're going to need some accessories. Head on over to Dragon Shield where you can get everything you need to get into the game. We have some exclusive links down below in the description that'll support our channel. And if you'd like to support us more directly, you can head on over to Patreon where you guys can submit deck lists for us to play here on the show, get tokens signed by the cast and crew, and even vote on polls for themes for the episodes. And of course, if you liked the episode, click like. And if you really liked it, hit subscribe. But now we have a sneak peek for our upcoming cosplay episode. Hi, I'm Kalia of the Vast, and I'm here to play on Decked Out. I just I'm sit here and look mad. pretty. Yeah. Well, welcome to the forest, ladies. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Massacre Girl. Are and you? I the drama. <laughs> yes, you're the drama. <laughs> Hello, my name is Nissa, and today I'm playing myself, Nissa Vastwood Seer. Go for it. <laughs> go for it. Veggie, go for it, please. I will. I will, ha I will happily start punching holes into this boat with you. Hi, I'm Rangavan, and look, it's me in the command zone. This is great. I'm having a good time. This is why nobody likes Ragavan. Ragavan has done this to you all, is by the way. This is why you're banned in every format. Look what you've done to my girl. <laughs> she, she's one with the earth. Wait, isn't the point of an assassin that we wouldn't know if you'd killed someone already? I could be dead right now. <laughs> it could and be. we wouldn't even know it. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> if he has the boots with the fur, everyone in the club will in fact be looking at her. <laughs> Ooh, are they made of Ragavan? We are magic characters. We are magic creatures. We know magic. We are magic. Yeah, we are magic. Sorry, redo the episode, new yeah. cosplay. <laughs>